get more acclimated to trading view. Now, as you can see, I'm on the free version here. How do we know that? Because there's an ad in the bottom left. Funny enough, that pop-up ad is for TradeStation, which I've been using for many years and will continue to do so. I just feel that TradingView has a lot of opportunities, a lot of indicators, including the money bell one you see up here uh, that are not so easy to program. So when you have the free version of TradingView, you have to do what I just did there. You have to like close away ads and stuff often. It's kind of annoying. So at some point it is worth taking on a trial. So here I am in the E-mini one hour chart and I'm just sort of getting the lay of the land. One thing I noticed is that the time at the bottom of the chart wasn't matching the time I operate. So if you look all the way in the bottom right, the computer, that's New York time, right? Market opens at 9.30 Eastern, but the chart was showing something else. So here's where I figured out how to adjust that. So now I figured out you go to the bottom right and then you have all these time zone choices and I took New York with a sigh of relief. Now the bottom panel, you can see the overnight 334, five, all matched the way I would have it on TradeStation. And a pro tip, if you're not sure where your time zone is on your chart, compare it to your computer. So if you have your computer either on Eastern or on the time frame you live, then just make sure you are matching your trading view so that uh, you're not trying to calculate time zones in your head. So then I began to notice, hey, even though the market opened, the data on the trading view chart was lagging. I went ahead and made a three minute chart on TradeStation so that I can compare since I know I have live data on TradeStation. But I could easily see that there was a difference in the candlesticks on TradeStation that had the live data versus my trading view free version. So I wanted to fix that. So I went to try to uh, figure out what do I need to do to get this data live, fumbled around a little bit and I'll pick up where I actually figured out what the next step is. So I went to try to open another chart, knowing that I probably would test my limits if I did it. And sure enough, it prompted me to upgrade. So I opened the trading view upgrade window and began to review the options. I ultimately decided to go with the essential plan. It would not allow me to plot my 15 second chart at the start, but it would give me just a bit more of what I need. Because the key is in order to plot live futures data, you need a paid plan or at least a trial of a paid plan. So the way you know the status of your data is those markers in the top there. The green dot shows you if you're live, but then the D, which is currently in orange the way they plot it, tells you if your data is delayed. So once I figured that out, I went ahead and clicked learn more <clears throat> and realized, okay, I, now I need to upgrade. If I want this to be a live chart, I have no choice. So until now I had been dabbling with trading view. It's time to get serious. So hit the button to go buy real time data, which brought me back to the screen and solidified my decision to do essential. Now notice they toggle you to annual because they're smart. They want you to pay up front. I toggled back to monthly in order to have the least monetary commitment because I'm still feeling this out. All right, so that changes the price a little bit, but $14.95 for one month, I can live with that. Try free for 30 days, sounds good. And I'm just reviewing the features and it has just enough of what I need to continue to learn TradingView. Again, I may be upgrading sooner than later, but I can't do second base charts. This is me figuring that out, boo-hoo. I could do it on premium, but I don't think it was worth for me right now, since I'm still trading on TradeStation, it wasn't worth paying $60 a month, right? All right, so I went ahead and clicked try free for 30 days and it started to prompt me to my TradingView account. So the rest of the steps from here, I kept private and now you can see here was the confirmation. Uh, pro tip, if you have a personal account, which I signed up for now, you have to use a personal card or personal PayPal. You can't use a business card. So I had to redo my card. All right, so then I came back and I was like, all right, cool, I should have live data. But I looked and I compared to my trade station and I still didn't have live data. And that's when I remembered, oh, that's probably because I need to refresh and because I probably need to go buy the futures data.
All right, so once you get to the futures data page, you can go and if you're trying to get the e-mini S&P like me, then you head over to CME Group and it is uh, $7 for real-time data, otherwise you're 10 minutes delayed. And you cannot use delayed data if you're doing day trading. I mean, it's just, you can't. So I click through and then hit subscribe to real time. And then it began to line up to add to my cart. So once I completed my purchase, it said I have agreements I need to fill out, which makes sense. So you will need to do the same. So then I closed trading view, reopened it, and I was finally able to get my fresh data. So this is me refreshing trading view. So you may have to do that once you buy the data. It just may need a refresh. And then finally here is where I saw, okay, it's matching up, right? I've got my time matching on my trading view and my computer. So I knew I was live. So that's all the steps I did to kind of get going here with creating an opportunity to use trading view for uh, futures trading. And then I started kind of playing around with analysis, observing the indicator. But again, I'll talk about that more uh, in other trainings, live sessions, and more. For now, you have some basics to get you going if you are trying to also get ES Futures Access going on TradingView. So let me know in the comments below this video if this has helped to see me do it and then go back and voice over as I'm like stumbling through but show you the pertinent parts. I'm happy to continue this process if you're looking to get going with TradingView or learn more of how to use it. And I just want your feedback. Again, this is when I started to experiment with uh, comparing the data and getting a little more technical. The last thing I look like I was trying to figure out is how do I get rid of this little side window? Uh, I was fumbling around, fumbling around. Then eventually I realized that the vertical line is a border. So you'll see that here in a moment. So there I was able to just take the border and move it to the right. Now I can focus on the main chart. There you have it. Hope that helps. Catch you soon.